Hey folks, uh, welcome to our first time value of money uh, in Excel video. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to go through the uh, very large PDF file that I posted that really is kind of a soup to nuts of, of the basics of time value of money. It's a very valuable resource. Um, you know, I apologize for not having a video out sooner, but I pretty much had a very gravelly, terrible voice all week. Uh, that is when I actually had a voice. Um, and anytime I tried to do a video, it just either came out completely, um, you know, inaudible or you know I had a lot of coughing fits in between so I apologize for that uh, but again hopefully that PDF uh, got you started now we'll take a look at um, uh, the first couple examples in that PDF so what, what this first Excel video is going to do the first couple videos actually um, is just simply going to walk through the examples that you saw in the PDF file um, but use Excel to get the, the numbers numbers right so the first thing I want to look at it should be on slide 18 um, and it starts off with uh, suppose You invest one thousand dollars for one year at five percent per year. And then what is the future value in one year? All right, so this just is uh, just like us thinking, okay, let's take a thousand dollars and put it into a savings account that earns 5%. Now, it wasn't that long ago that a lot of accounts you could earn 5%. Now that would be uh, rare, if not impossible to find. But this idea is we're going to park $1,000 somewhere and we're going to earn 5% on our money there. So I'm just going to put some um, so our inputs down so that we know, um, you know we have a certain specific spot for all of our inputs so we can go and reference them. So. So my initial amount invested, and that is going to be the thousand dollars. Interest rate is five percent, and we have to put that in as 0 0.05. Now we can tell Excel this is percent. Give it two decimal places, and we can tell Excel the thousand dollars. The thousand is in dollars. Now remember, put in 0 0.05 for interest rate, not five percent. If we just put in the whole number five, Excel will think we are talking about a 500% per year uh, rate of interest, which would be great, but it wouldn't work out very well for us for this problem. So then I'm just going to use the heading time invested um, for us to tell Excel how many years were invested. This first example is just one year, um, but let's just put that as an input on its own as well. So the next thing I have, in the example it doesn't really even mention, uh, but I'm going to put it in there, and we'll get to it down the road a little bit, but I'm just going to put it in there for us to see now. Um, and it's just asking, well, are we going to make any additional payments or any additional deposits? We, we pay the initial $1,000 to the, to the bank uh, to start our savings account. Are we going to have any additional payments? Um, and I'm just going to put zero for this example. For many of the first examples we do, we're going to put zero. Uh, but you'll see once we start doing the functions in Excel, why we kind of want to have that there. It isn't 100% necessary, uh, but it'll make things a little bit easier down the road. All right, so now let's let's answer the question here. So, so we'll look at this a couple ways. So the first way is, well, what do we have in one year? We have what we started with plus any interest. Okay, so the initial investment, I'm just going to say equals, was that $1,000. And the interest I earn equals 5% times my initial investment of $1,000. So at the end of a year, I have the grand I gave the bank, and I have the $50 in interest that they pay me. So here I'm just going to put ending balance. And then in parentheses, I'm just going to put one year. And that equals the thousand I started with plus the fifty dollars in interest I got along the way as well. So if you remember from the PowerPoint slides, we actually have a little formula that we could use that wraps us all into this. And the formula is future value 
equals present value times 1 plus i raised to n. So let's walk through each one of these things, and we're going to say um, where future value, and I'm actually going to put a uh, apostrophe here. Now you don't have to worry about recreating this. PV equals present value, FV equals future value, I equals interest rate, and capital N equals number of periods. So in our example here, our future value is what we're trying to find. Present value is $1,000 we start with. My interest rate is 5%, and my number of periods is 1. So let's just go down one row here, put ending balance. And now let's go ahead and do this formula right here. I'm going to actually make this formula bold and underlined since it's very important uh, for this whole chapter. And let's do that formula all in this one cell. So this equals, and so future value or ending balance equals present value times parentheses 1 plus my interest rate raised to my number of periods. That number of periods is simply the time that our money is invested. So raised to 1 in this case. Now I know raising to 1 doesn't really do anything, um, but let's just keep that pattern because if it's 2, 3, 4, 5 years, we will need to have the exponent there. And I say I get the same $1,050 that I got um, doing it piece by piece. So now what if I decided, okay, let's keep the money in there for two years. Excuse me, folks. All right, so let's uh, scroll up here, make a little bit of room. And let's uh, kind of retype the inputs that we know that we have. So this is my initial amount, and that is $1,000. Interest rate, 0 0.05. Make that percent and give it two decimal places. And I'll just use the number sign, call it number of periods. So this is uh, number of periods. I'm changing what I call time invested. Now we're going to start calling that number of periods. Um, in this case, it's two. What if I invest for two years? And additional payments remain zero. Again, uh, not until we start using the Excel functions are we going to need this, but let's just get in the habit of, of putting it down as an input. So what's my ending balance in two years? Well, what we can do here is do the same thing that we did before. So let's start with my initial amount, and that equals $1,000. Year one interest equals 5% times that initial amount. I'll call this year one ending balance. That equals 1,000 plus the 50. So 1,050. Up to now, that's just what we did in the previous example. So now let's put year two interest, and that equals 1,050 times 5%. Now, so I'm keeping my money in there for two years. I put $1,000 at the beginning of year one. At the end of year one, I have the 1000 I started with. I get $50 in interest. Now that 1050 is going to earn interest for the next year. And that's what this calculation does. 
So during that year, I'll earn $52.50 in interest. And I'll call this year two ending balance. And that equals 1050 plus the 5250. And I get 1102.50. So if I invest $1,000 for two years, that, and it earns 5% a year, uh, at the end of those two years, I'll have $1,102.50. All right, so let's, using, let's use the formula. So I'm typing that again just because it's worthwhile for us to see. So my year two ending balance. Again, we're going to do this all in one cell instead of doing it, um, you know, this sort of piecemeal step by step by step method. Let's just do it all in one cell. You'll see it's much quicker. So equals. Now I got to start with my present value of one thousand dollars times parentheses. Oops. So let me start that one over again. Equals one thousand dollars times parentheses one plus i raised to the number of years that I'm investing in. So before I close this, cell B26 is my present value or my initial amount invested times 1 plus my interest rate. So times 1 plus in cell B27 is my 5% interest rate. Raised to the number of periods that it's invested for. Well, this time it's asking what if it's invested for two years. We hit enter and I get the 110250 I got in the previous method. So again, this way should be a little bit quicker. Now, let's calculate it yet one more way. So right below here, um, I'll put year two, ending balance. So now, even though we saw we saved a bit of time using the formula compared to doing it the piece by piece method, now you can imagine also if this was 10 or 20 years, this piece by piece, year by year method would be a real pain in the backside. Um, so the function, the formula is, is makes things a lot easier. Now let's use uh, Excel's built-in functions, which is even easier than the formula. So that equals FV is the function that we want for future value. Now this function first shows itself on the PowerPoints on slide 24, I believe. Um, and we'll get to the example. That's part of two, but it's, it's worthwhile to introduce it now. The great thing about these functions in Excel is they have a built-in, uh, basically a built-in cheat sheet for us, right? So there's two ways that we can cheat with Excel. If I delete this a little bit, I know I want to calculate the future value if I type F. I get a list of all the functions that begin with F, and I can scroll through until I find the future value when I want. As I keep typing, Excel narrows it down to whichever function fits it. FV or FV schedule, well, I want FV so I know I'm on the right function. Open parentheses. Knowing what the function is um, is half the step. The, the next half of it is figuring out what to put into the function and putting it in the right order. Um, you know, back in the day when this was first created, this little pop-up didn't occur here. You have to know how to put things in. Here, Excel makes it very easy for us. The first thing it wants is rate. Notice that rate is bolded right here. And that's my investment rate, so my 5%. I click on that, comma. Our little cheat sheet here moved on. Now we want NPER. And if you hover over that, you can click on that and get a definition of what that is. Um, what NPER is, is number of periods. So I'll click on two periods for two years, comma. And the last thing it wants here is present value. Uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, payments. We do not have any payments, and that's why I want you to have the zero in for, in for this. The only drawback to the ex is, uh, these Excel functions is they kind of make them one size fits all for the lump sum, which is just, you know, how much will this grow to in two, three, four, five years? Um, it's the same function for, well, if I pay $100 a year, what's, what's that going to grow to? Um, the same function that answers those questions. You just have to remember, if we're dealing with a lump sum, which simply means there's no payments during those two years. So in our example, we invested 1000 <coughs> at the beginning of year one. And what we want to find out what it grew to at the end of year two. There are no additional payments, so we just put zero in for payments. <coughs> oh, excuse me, folks. Again, losing my voice a little bit. So after we click on the zero, which is B29, 
hit comma again, we want present value. Here we have to make sure we put this present value in as negative. So I hit the minus sign and then click on my initial amount or my present value and close parentheses. So again, to review the function, we have rate, comma, number of periods, comma, payments, which we know are zero. And uh, you can hard code a zero in there, but I always prefer not to have numbers hard coded into a formula. And then we have our present value, which is the $1,000, and we have to put that in as negative. Now, the reason we do that, the snarky answer is, well, it needs to be in order for Excel to calculate it, and that's true. But the intuitive thing to think about is if I'm going to the bank and I'm depositing $1,000, I'm taking $1,000 out of my pocket and giving it to the bank. If I, this is a stock investment that's earning me 5% a year, I'm taking $1,000 out of my pocket and giving it to the broker. Right? So it's still my money. The broker's investing it at 5% a year for me or it's sitting in my bank account, but I don't have access to it. So for two years, it's, it's the equivalent of me spending the $1,000 for, for those two years. So think of that as why it's negative, because it's money. I'm, I'm, I'm buying this investment that pays 5%. So we hit return, and I get the $1,002.50 that we got in the first place. All right, guys, so I will um, stop our recording there.